Hi guys and welcome to another accent video. If you've joined me on any of my previous accent videos, you'll know that I normally cover UK regional accents. For example, the Liverpool accent or the London accent, the Manchester or even West Country accent. And if those are the accents you're interested in, you can find them in the description box below. However, today we are going international. We're crossing the pond and looking at the American accent. Lots of you have asked me for this video in the past and looking at America, it's huge and that means the accents vary vastly. So what we're going to do now is look at the general aspects of a general American accent. So, who are we meeting today? This is Gabby. Gabby is from Minnesota. That means she is an American. Hello Gabby. Hey guys. Thank you, Gabby, for joining us. My pleasure, Anna. So you might recognize Gabby if you've been studying English specifically because Gabby is an English teacher on YouTube channel Go Natural English. Do you want to tell the guys a little bit about what you offer on your channel? Sure, if you want to learn American English pronunciation, vocabulary, and fluency, then you should watch Go Natural English. So you can find a link to Gabby's channel in the description box below, but before you go over there, do stay with us and look at the differences between the American accent and the British English accent. So as I said, Gabby is from Minnesota, but you have quite a neutral American accent. Correct, I moved around a lot, so I kind of standardized my English, especially teaching English too. Okay, fantastic. So let's first of all have a look at some of the words that are commonly different between American and British English. So the first word that's different is the word rubbish. I would say rubbish, but Gabby would say trash. Put out the rubbish or take out the trash. Next is the word mobile, my mobile phone, but Gabby would refer to it as cell phone. So I need to buy a new mobile phone. Or give me your cell phone number. Cool. Full stop. The little punctuation mark which is a dot we call a full stop, but you call period. So um, I'm not doing this full stop. I'm not doing this period. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, candy floss. Cotton candy. <laughs> <laughs> I just think for a minute. <laughs> so what you would buy at the fun fair or the carnival, a lovely big fluffy cloud of candy floss. In America, it would be referred to as Cotton candy. Cotton candy. Okay, there are so many words that are different between American and British English that we could be here all day. And in fact, we've had so much fun in the last few hours discussing. Yeah, the just going back and forth, discovering them. And some of them are hilarious. And if you want to know more, then you can check out the video which we've just made for Gabby's channel. And the link for that will be in the description box below and on the end of this video. So just stay to the end and then jump over and check out those very funny differences. But right now we're going to break down the actual sounds, the sound differences in pronunciation. Firstly, and most famously, one of the biggest differences between American English and British English is the R sound. In British English, as I'm always telling you on my videos, we have to flatten the R and in most cases we ignore it altogether if it's not at the beginning. Far, 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 far. I live far away. I live far away. You do live far away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or. 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 This or that. This or that. There. 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 There over there. There over there. <laughs> there over there. There over there. Good. In British English, these two words are the same. Aunt and aunt. But in American English, they are different. So for example, I would say, you aren't my aunt. But Gabby would say, <laughs> you aren't my aunt. Aunt, aunt, aren't, aunt. Cool, very, very different. The next sound we're going to look at is the T sound, particularly when T appears in the middle of the word. In some cases, you'll hear it sounded like a D in America. So for example, the word water would sound water, or better, better, or letter, letter. Good. 
So I might say, I spilt water on your letter. <gasps> you spilled water on my letter? <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the T sound is omitted altogether. So for example, in the word interested. Interested. Mountain. Mountain. And international. International. So I'm interested in international mountain climbing. 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 And sometimes if there is a double T, the T might actually be glottalized in American. For example, in the word written. Written. Button. Button. I've written the word button. I've written the word button. Good. And while we're here, Gabby, this is your second visit to London. That's right. What do you think of London? London is such a pretty city. It's a pretty city. A pretty city. <laughs> <laughs> so in British English, we would have said London is a pretty city, but with the American T's taken down. Pretty city. Beautiful. <laughs> well, I'm glad you like it. Thank you. Something else you'll notice in the American accent is when the words end with I-L-E. In British English, we say I'll, but in American English, these tend to be ul. Yeah? Correct. So like in the word agile. Agile. Or fragile. Fragile. Or fertile. Fertile. Mobile. Mobile. Moving on to vowels. The short vowel O oh, has a slightly different placement in American English and sometimes is completely different depending on the word. So for example, if I say lot, Gabby would say lot. So it's more forward placed like an A. Ah. Lot. Lot. I could say the word on. 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 So it's also more, um, it's got more length, hasn't mm -hmm. it? Um, how about the word got? Got. 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 So let's try those words in the sentence, I've got a lot of work going on. 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 And finally, the word what, which for us has the same vowel, oh, what, but in America changes completely to what? What? <laughs> what? So that sounds almost like a U, doesn't uh. it? Uh, what? Like a schwa. Say what? Say what? Mm -hmm. Okay, but for us it's oh, wa, what? What? What are you doing? What are you doing? Great. Let's move on to the long vowels now. Now, the long vowel R, which in standard British English is long and open, but in Northern English, where I originate from, it's the short a ah, most of the time. In America, it's the same as Northern English, so that's a good way to remember it. So, for example, in the word bath, Northerners would say bath and Americans would say bath. So, if you're Northern English, this is going to be an easy, an easy change for you. It's time for your bath. It's time for your bath. It's all in the past. It's all in the past. Great. And one word which is constantly brought up in my English lessons is the word can't. In America you say can't. 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 So you have to be very careful with this word. If you mispronounce it, it can sound like a very naughty word. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, it's still long in American, it's just forward place eh. Can't. 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 But in standard, standard British English, open and long. Can't. Can't. Okay, I can't stand it. I can't stand it. Great. Okay, the next long vowel we're going to look at is the er uh vowel, common in words such as work. 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 I'm going to work. I'm going to work. Bird. 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 I can hear a bird. I can hear a bird. Girl. 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 Hey girl. Hey girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, world. 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 Where in the world are you from? Where in the world are you 
you from? England. <laughs> the United States. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and the final vowel sound that we're going to look at is the aw vowel. In British English, this is a huge space inside the mouth, the lips are rounded, and the vowel doesn't move. Aw, aw. But in America, it's slightly different. So, for example, if I say the word court, you would say court. Cop. Cop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to teach you how to speak I American I couldn't even here. understand. <laughs> in British English, I would say caught, but Gabby would say caught. I would say bought, bought. Have you caught him yet? Have you caught him yet? Did you, did you, did you <laughs> bought did you it yet? Um, have you bought it? Have you bought it? And law, law. Don't break the law. Don't break the law. He was caught breaking the law. He was caught breaking the law. Okay, that covers some of the most common differences between a general American accent and a standard British English accent. Of course, there are many variations, which I will cover in future episodes. Don't forget that Gabby and I have spent some time finding out some hilarious differences between British words and American words, which you must go and check out. The link for that is in the description box below and at the end of this video. But before I let you go, Gabby, I'm going to ask you to read um, the passage, Comma Get Secure, so any of you out there who want to have a good old listen to the American accent in full swing, then this is for you. Otherwise, thank you very much for joining us today. My pleasure. And don't forget to check out Gabby's channel. Okay, I'll leave it to it. Thank you. Well, here's a story for you. Sarah Perry was a veterinary nurse who had been working daily at an old zoo in a deserted district of the territory. So she was very happy to start a new job at a superb private practice in North Square near the Duke Street Tower. That area was much nearer for her and more to her liking. Even so, on her first morning, she felt stressed. She ate a bowl of porridge, checked herself in the mirror, and washed her face in a hurry. Then she put on a plain yellow dress and a fleece jacket, picked up her kit, and headed for work. When she got there, there was a woman with a goose waiting for her. The woman gave Sarah an official letter from the vet. The letter implied that the animal could be suffering from a rare form of foot and mouth disease, which was surprising because normally you would only expect to see it in a dog or a goat. Sarah was sentimental, so this made her feel sorry for the beautiful bird. Before long, that itchy goose began to strut around the office like a lunatic, which made an unsanitary mess. The goose's owner, Mary Harrison, kept calling, comma, comma, which Sarah thought was an odd choice for a name. Comma was strong and huge, so it would take some force to trap her. But Sarah had a different idea. First, she tried gently stroking the goose's lower back with her palm, then singing a tune to her. Finally, she administered ether. Her efforts were not futile. In no time, the goose began to tire, so Sarah was able to hold on to Kama and give her a relaxing bath. Once Sarah had managed to bathe the goose, she wiped her off with a cloth and laid her on her right side. Then, Sarah confirmed the vet's diagnosis. Almost immediately, she remembered an effective treatment that required her to measure out a lot of medicine. Sarah warned that this course of treatment might be expensive, either five or six times the cost of penicillin. I can't imagine paying so much, but Mrs. Harrison, a millionaire, uh, <laughs> I can't imagine paying so much, but Mrs. Harrison, a millionaire lawyer, thought it was a fair price for a cure.